Hello and thanks for joining us for France In Focus. This week we're at Paris Orly, the French capital's second busiest airport, handling around 30 million passengers every single year. Well, all around me, people are coming and going at this particular terminal to various overseas French territories, different parts of Europe and also North Africa. We're going to take you inside now and take a look around. En Espagne. À Casablanca. C'est mon fils qui part pour la Guadeloupe. Je suis arrivée et je repars. Donc, je vais partir pour profiter un peu de soleil. Oui, en vacances, oui. Commercial flights began operating here at Paris Orly during the 1930s and it went on to become the French capital's main airport. But by the 1960s, with air travel booming in popularity, it became clear the French capital needed something much bigger. And so in 1974, Roissy Charles de Gaulle went into operation. And we're going to take you there now. It's about 40 kilometers north of Orly. And we're going to show you a bit about what happens behind the scenes and what is today Europe's second busiest air transport hub. With nine different terminals, Charles de Gaulle Airport covers 32 square kilometers of land and sits on three different counties. At the peak of the summer season, 1,600 planes take off and land there every day, transporting some 230,000 passengers. 400,000 pieces of luggage are also registered daily at airline counters and then sent to a highly sensitive room for scanning. France's civil police is in charge here. Their first task? Check every employee. Your ID card, please. Thank you. There's a first background check that's done by state authorities to see if a person has been convicted in the past. So not everyone can work here. In the airport's underground, bags travel on these long and automated conveyor belts. Thanks to barcoded tags, these scanners recognize their final destination. And just like that, this bag is sent to Montreal, as well as this one. Every suitcase has now been scanned, but as an extra security measure, dogs are brought in to look for explosives. It takes about an hour and a half for the luggage to go through this labyrinth system before it's placed in the plane's hold. At Charles de Gaulle Airport, every step has been meticulously timed, but unexpected delays are common. Paul Marquez works for Air France. He's now used to oversee these types of passenger evacuations along with the police. Incidents like this one, where there's an attendant baggage, it happens all the time, several times a day. But we do the best we can to reassure our clients. And that's enough to greatly disrupt air traffic. Thomas Vitar works in the airport's control tower, and today, aircrafts are lining up on the departure runway. Air France authorization for takeoff, alley 08, calm winds. He handles the takeoff of over a plane per minute, or 70 per hour. The pace is so intense, air traffic controllers switch every hour. It's a stressful job as aircrafts can only land and take off at a given time and according to a specific order. You can't take off too close behind an A380 because if you do, it will create too much air turbulence. It could even be dangerous for a smaller plane waiting behind. So the idea is to make short-haul flights take off before long-haul flights and then repeat that pattern. Back in the terminal, no explosives were found in the unattended baggage, but its owner was handed out a 750 euro fine for causing a full-scale security alert. The incident also created an hour and 20 minute delay and many families almost missed their flight. Such disruptions are like a grain of sand in the gears of the complex Charles de Gaulle airport system. Well, as well as the airports in the major cities like Paris, Nice and Lyon, France is also home to dozens of much smaller airports, some 
200 in all right across the country, bringing in tourists, business travellers and cargo from all around the world. But given the high cost of running the facilities, plus the fact that only a handful of them actually turn a profit, has many asking what's the financial sense in keeping them open? Bergerac is a small town in this bucolic, vineyard-filled corner of France, just an hour and a half away from Bordeaux. And with only 30,000 people, it has its own airport and around 15 flights per week. 78% of them go to the UK because a lot of British citizens have purchased property in the region. So I work from a UK office though as well, so it's good for my trips back. We live here, so we're just going to go back for my birthday and just to visit family for a week. I have a house in the Gers, um, so I, I come here every, every two weeks. 300,000 passengers per year fly to Bergerac, primarily on these four low-cost carriers. The local municipality attracted the airlines by pulling out its wallet, to the tune of 1.1 million euros in subsidies every year. A national government watchdog has criticized the expenditure, but local politicians say it's worth it. That investment of 1.1 million euros benefits the region to the tune of 153 million euros. The local economy has developed thanks to the airport, in particular the housing market. Real estate is the biggest beneficiary of the low-cost flights. There's even a realtor's office in the airport, where travelers are greeted by Rose Caldwell, an English woman who has lived in France for 20 years. Hello. With ads for homes in English, the target market is clear. And those buyers say that the easy air connections to the UK are a main reason to consider Bergerac and not somewhere else. But low-cost carriers aren't always a net benefit for a region. 500 kilometers to the east in Saint-Étienne, elected officials have decided to stop providing 800,000 euros in annual subsidies to low-cost carriers for flights to Portugal, Turkey and Morocco, vacation destinations that aren't boosting the local economy. There isn't a lot of outside money coming in. More people from here go on vacation elsewhere than those who come here as tourists. Subsidies like that work when more money is coming in than the subsidies cost. No more public money, no more flights. The low-cost carriers plan to shut down the routes by the end of the year. And the 160,000 yearly passengers will have to find other ways to their destinations. It's annoying. I'm a regular passenger, and this is inconvenient. Without the low-cost carriers, the airport will empty out, almost entirely. In addition to France's existing aviation hubs, there has been talk since the 1970s of building a massive airport in Notre-Dame-des-Landes, serving the west of the country. But the high cost of that project, as well as the environmental impact, has sparked fierce debate and protests, and that's left the entire idea up in the air. The idea to create a so-called airport of the Great West was conceived in the 1960s. The decentralization was meant to reinforce the economic power of France's regions. Notre-Dame-des-Landes was quickly selected as the site for this project. It's an agricultural area with few residents that's situated about 20 kilometers away from Nantes. From the very start, farmers, who were worried they would lose their land, opposed the project. At the turn of the century, the mayor of Nantes, Jean Marquerot, revived the initiative. In time, this new airport was meant to replace the Nantes Atlantique Airport which was hitting its saturation point. The project was finally approved in 2003. Residents of Notre-Dame-des-Landes did not hide their frustration. We built all of this. We've been here for 13 years, and they're taking us for fools by trying to take all we have. I don't understand how they can let people build and renovate here. When they're constructing an airport just a kilometer away. Construction was meant to start in 2014, with a grand opening slated for 2017. But when the first farms were raised in 2012, thousands of demonstrators took to the streets. Farmers were joined by politicians and environmentalists. They denounced the destruction of a hundred different protected species. The most radical opponents, called the Zadists, camped out on the site. They clashed with law enforcement and blocked the construction from taking place. 
Faut y aller, on a assez reculé comme ça. Maintenant, à vous d'arrêter. C'est beau, l'amour. Madame, faut y aller, madame. Hey, vous allez. Since the project's beginnings, more than 150 appeals have been sent to the Justice Ministry. All of them were rejected, much to the satisfaction of the airport's defenders. As soon as all the court proceedings have finished and they've been confirmed by the rulings, there's no viable reason to delay the project. The construction must begin. Still, many opponents of the airport continued to occupy the zone to defend. So to move the project forward, President François Hollande called for a local poll in 2016. 55 percent of respondents said they were in favor of the airport project, but the Zadis contested the referendum, refusing to leave the site. Today, the status quo prevails. The construction, delayed countless times, still has not begun. Emmanuel Macron promised to designate a mediator to the case who will attempt to settle the matter once and for all. Well, that's it for this week's edition of France in Focus. Thanks for watching. See you again soon here on France 24. I'm Sarah Morris and I'm France 24's correspondent in Madrid. I'll bring you the latest news on Spain and Portugal, two countries battling to leave behind years of austerity. Join me live and check out my reports on France 24 and France24.com. Sarah Morris, one of the 160 France 24 correspondents around the world.